This video is sponsored by friends of AudacityMovie.com. It's a film about, well, actually, I get the impression that's supposed to be a secret, but uh, I'll give you a hint. It's got some comedians and some gay marriage. AudacityMovie.com. Mr. Yelly, if I may, what's something the Republicans are spending money on right now that shouldn't be? Who am I talking to? So, I learned something interesting from these Democrat state legislators in New Hampshire and these Democrat state legislators in Colorado Springs. Are you, are you Representative Lee? I am. Oh, cool. I have a question or two for you. By all means. The two events, although a few years apart, were so similar that they gave me a chance to observe the differences in Democrat behavior in these two places. It also sort of provided me with an observation as to something that's happening to free staters. First, I was almost floored by the uh, apparent superiority, at least rhetorically, of the Colorado Springs Democrats. It's not so much that they were more eloquent, it's that they were uh, actually addressing their rhetoric against real problems. And although I don't know what the text of their exact bills was, they at least seemed to be aiming in a pro-liberty direction on about two-thirds of their issues. They were holding a town hall, the Democrats were holding a town hall, town hall meetings in public libraries in both cases. But these Democrats at Portsmouth, New Hampshire, spent their whole time whining about Republican cuts, or attempted cuts, and free staters, so it seemed. Now, to their credit, both the New Hampshire Democrats and the Colorado Springs Democrats were pretty good about stopping and answering my questions. But I think the key to the difference is... In New Hampshire, what's happening is libertarians, unlike in Colorado Springs, are being absorbed into the Republican Party to a large extent. In Colorado Springs, there's sort of like a novelty, uh, uh, a non-threat. In, in Portsmouth, they are feared politically. So instead of these Democrats uh, thinking about libertarian concerns and maybe carrying some of them out, they're more focused on fighting libertarians because the libertarians are in the Republican Party. There's a reason why the two-party system sort of took over in the United States. And the fact that you see free staters even sort of being absorbed by it just shows you how powerful it is. I actually personally don't think that this is a bad phenomenon. I think the two-party system actually can work as long as all political ideas are represented uh, within the two-party system. Like right now, at the national level, libertarian ideas are not very welcome in the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. But in New Hampshire, where the parties are actually real, <laughs> liberty folks are really closer to being welcomed in the Republican Party than they are to being shunned. Uh, to, what would you say is your main beef with free staters? Well, there, there's a platform that from start to finish, many, many people find uh, intemperate. Yes, there are the Jim Scanlon types who at least come off as being hostile to free staters, somewhat. Do you mind off oh, don't touch. Don't touch. But, well, well, and there's this lady, too. <laughs> but as a Republican free stater who's voted pretty much Republican ever since 1984, I would have to say I'm actually relatively pleased with the reaction of the Republican Party to free staters. I would not have expected it to be this good while making predictions in 2003. You just want me to. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm actually going to get it. AudacityMovie.com